Hello and welcome to another Intuitive Programming and Database tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over Part D of your assignment for Chapter Number Six. In this problem, you have to display all the numbers, the sum of all the numbers from one through hundred. Now, if we were to sit there and write a very long statement like one plus two plus three plus four, it's going to take forever. So, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the loops here. And in this loop, what we're going to do is we will going to start by one, and then every time we're in the loop, we're going to add the next number in line. So, for example, the first value of sum will be one. Next time in the loop, it'll going to be one plus two because two is the next positive integer. Then one plus two will going to be three. Next time it runs, the next positive integer is three, so three plus three is six. The next positive integer is 4, 6 plus 4 is 10. The next positive integer is 5, so 5 plus 10, 15. So like that, it will going to be an accumulating sum, or what we call a running total or a running sum. A running sum or a running total is something that is calculated in the loop as long as the loop is looping. So for this purpose, I've, defined, I've designed a form. In this form, I have a button, and I have one text box, let me bring this closer so that you can see what I called it in terms of naming it. So the name of the button is button one. The name of the text box is txt sum, as you can see over here in the property, in the name property. Also under properties, you can see it's txt sum. Now let me shrink this so that we can write code on it. Let me double click on the button, and here we are behind the scene. So first, I'm declaring a variable called sum of type integer. And the reason I'm declaring it of type integer because I am calculating sum of positive integers. So there's no point of declaring a double. Now I will going to be using for loop in this example. It's going to be a great choice. It will be the least amount of code that we would have to write. And as we have learned in the lecture tutorials that when you are using a variable in the for loop, you can declare it right over there. You don't even have to declare it ahead of time. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be declaring a counter variable of type integer that we're going to run from 1 through 100 because we need to calculate the sum of the first 100 positive integers. So we're going to make this counter run for those many times. Every time the counter runs, what we're going to do is we will going to add the current value of sum with the value of counter. But this doesn't solve our problem because as you know in algebra, you have to perform computations and you have to give the result of the computation over to another variable which is written on the left hand side to complete the equation. Now what this will going to do is the starting point for counter is 1. 1 plus 0, when you don't declare an initial value for a variable in Visual Basic, it is assigned a value of 0. So 1 plus 0, this value of sum is 1. Next time in the loop, when counter becomes 2, then 2 plus 1, the new value for sum is 3. So we are adding the old value of sum to the value of counter to generate the next value for sum. This is very similar to what we did in our part C, where balance was actually calculated as 1 plus APR times balance. So the previous value of balance was multiplied with 1 plus R to generate the next value for balance. That's exactly what we're doing. We're using the old value. We're adding the counter to it to generate the new value. So this loop will going to keep going for 100 times. And every time it goes, it will going to grab the current value of counter. We're going to add it to the current value of sum to generate the next value of sum. This loop will automatically stop when counter reaches 100. And when it reaches 100, all we got to do is simply display the output in the text box that we have created called txt sum. We'll simply display the value of sum. So now let's try running this program. And here we have the program. Let me bring down this code here in front of you. And while I run the program, here we go. I click on sum of 1 through 100. And that's exactly the same output 
as you see in problem that has been given to you for part D. This is the sum of all the positive integers 1 through 100. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Let me know if you have any questions.